Okay, so you wanna grow the best garden ever this spring. I'm gonna teach you how. The first thing that you're gonna to need to have is a good seed starting mix because the key to having healthy plants is having awesome soil. So this is my soil mix and start with this and then we're gonna use this fertilizer to go into the seed starting mix, which will be the next part. So four parts, azomite, one part, green sand, one part, rock phosphate, and one part blood meal. So mix that all up, put a container, and we're gonna use this in the next part. Okay, part two, this is my seed starting mix. If you did not see part one where I taught you the recipe for the fertilizer that goes into this seed starting mix, go watch that. Because the key to growing awesome plants and awesome gardens is soil. You need awesome soil to grow awesome plants. Um, it is literally their home. So I'm gonna teach you how I make my soil from so seed starting all the way up to my compost to the soil that goes into my garden beds. So here we go. This is how I make the seed starting mix. I do these in um, soil blocks, but you can use the same mix in pots. And then the next uh, part, I'm gonna teach you how to soil block. So, and I'll teach you the benefits of that as well. So at the very end of this, I will put the recipe for this uh, soil mix so that you can write down the proportions. All right, so the base of my seed starter mix is coconut core, and coconut core versus peat moss is actually the reason I started making my own seed starter mix because most seed starter mixes use peat moss as their base. Peat moss is not environmentally friendly, nor is it sustainable. It is not good for the ecosystem. Coconut core is sustainable. It works just as well. It's just as inexpensive, and um, it's, it's a lot better. So please make the switch to coconut core. Anyway, we're gonna add tons of water to this. It is going to absorb and we're gonna get this squashy um, soil consistency and then we know we have it. We're gonna add our compost. So this time I added half worm castings, half homegrown compost. I'm just low on homegrown compost, so I added some worm casting. Um, vermiculite and perlite. Perlite adds drainability to your soil and the vermiculite uh, helps retain moisture, uh, which is great for seedlings. If you don't wanna purchase ver uh, perlite, Sand is a pretty decent uh, substitute for that, so sand helps drainability. And then the last thing we're gonna add here is our uh, homemade natural fertilizer that we made in part one. Uh, and then we're gonna mix that up super, super well. And there you go, this works great in pots, it works great in seed trays, and it also works amazing for soil blocking. Not everything works great for soil blocking, but the next part I'm gonna teach you how to soil block with this um, and the benefits of soil blocking. So here we go. Let's start some seeds. So today I'm gonna to teach you a tip that I learned a couple years ago that has drastically improved my seed starting. It is soil blocking. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to do it. I used to use these little four inch pots for years. These are not sustainable and they can cause root boundness in your pots, which increases transplant shock. That's gonna delay your plants growing. That's no good. So this will solve that. If you have not seen my soil videos of how to make the soil that I put into these, Go watch those, but now I'm gonna show you how to use these. They're awesome. Okay, tip number one, we need to add enough water to this to make a solid ball out of this. This will make nice solid blocks. And you're gonna press the soil in to the soil blocker uh, very firmly so that it makes a good sturdy block. And then I'm just gonna fill my 1020 trays with it and they're gonna go into my greenhouse. We're gonna put the seeds right into these little holes here and cover it with a little bit more soil. That's it.